My eldest brother died um, just before final exams last year. Um, and, um, you know, this is kind of how I'm feeling right now. Casey, why don't you introduce the confessional since this was your brainchild and this is something that you came up with and quite frankly even designed from the very beginning. Tell us a little bit about it. Uh, you know, I always start by saying this really isn't my project. This is kind of a, a brainstorm that was a collaborative with so many people. The confessional really is a, a brainchild of so many and so many different ideas in creating a way where children um, have a new coping tool or a coping strategy using social media and using technology in a way that's never been used before. Um, so we allow them and give them the opportunity in the Hearts Can Heal program at Olivia's house to use the confessional, which is a, a full-scale video studio, for them to vent and talk about what's going on in their world however they want to do it. So it's a video studio, so you could actually create movies, but they also can use it. They're not creating a movie, but they're venting their pain or sharing their thoughts or sharing their feelings. The idea came out of um, the MTV reality series, The Real World, mm -hmm. um, where that was the longest running reality series, actually. And, and uh, the first, as I understand it. The first American, yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But they created a room in that house where they took seven strangers and put them together and that's all what happened. And uh, they always had a room in the house called The Confessional, mm -hmm. which was a space that the cameramen couldn't follow and that people weren't asking questions and other castmates weren't going and just one person could go in alone. They turned on the camera, they ran the show, mm -hmm. and it would never appear. Other castmates wouldn't see it until it actually aired. So a very safe place for them, in a way, and our kids needed a safe place to vent to. Absolutely. What we were finding were kids were putting their feelings on Facebook and Twitter, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that was great because they were getting what was on the inside out. Mm -hmm. But at the same point, we were finding that their feelings, that doesn't mean their reality. Mm -hmm. and or so, facts. Or fact. And sometimes what they were you know, typing in the moment, which felt good to get off their chest, mm -hmm. might come back to, you know, bite them later. Mm -hmm. You know, this is kind of how I'm feeling right now. And my brother and I, we were really never close, seeing as he was 13 years older than me. He's my half-brother. It's a really long story. And the only thing I can really remember about him, like, all the good times we had was when I was really little, before he, like, got into high school and went off to the war. So I can't really remember that. My goal was to create a space that would be safe to do that, mm -hmm. to get that stuff out in the universe, have someone, quote-unquote, see it mm -hmm. without everyone. If you knew that 10 years from now, everything you put out in social media on your Facebook or your tweeting account, whatever, if you knew that that was going to be read by somebody very, very important in your life, would you change how you use social media? Would you change your Facebook page? And the majority of people said, no, I'm pretty much who I am on Facebook and I'm not embarrassed. I censor myself. I do all of those things to make sure I, it wouldn't be a problem. But kids don't always have that ability to that filter. Right, right, to filter in the moment, especially when they're grieving or they're upset or they're angry. What was so neat about the confessional was when the first time we said, you know, in a staff meeting, it was, what do we want to do and how will it work? Just things kept coming to peace. Oh, and then we can do that. Mm -hmm. Oh, and then they can do this. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they could do that too. Which to this day is still like that. We're still uncovering ways that the kids want to use this. Absolutely. And that they do use it in the program. When we first designed it, we thought that the teenagers would be the ones to gravitate to it and use it all the time. All the time, yeah. And it's actually kind of a flip-flop effect where the younger kids are the ones who really love it and always mm -hmm. want to be up here and telling their story and doing another show and teaching. Mm -hmm. And they bring their puppet shows up and, you know, their mm -hmm. artwork and stuff like that. The middle school kids are coming up here with, you know, their ego and just want to tell you about them. And it's neat. Want to be on camera. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The teens, however, are not so far. I mean, what, in a year? We've yeah. been using this yeah. space for a year now, only a year. But the teens are the ones who are not coming up consistently, but will come up. But when they do, mm -hmm. it is so powerful. I know he was, like, mentally unstable or whatever, but really, he... He, my mom had to kick him out of the house because he was being so mean to me. So I don't have a lot of good memories of him. The only good memories I have are like videos of him when I was never around or whatever. So 
and that makes me feel really bad. It's almost like they've been Very waiting profound. and waiting and yeah. building, and, and even so, some of them bring a script, right. things that they had written that they wanted to share on right. camera and, and you know take to the world in a way or almost get off. I think it's interesting how the, the teens sometimes, they just have a bad day at school and they're here and then they vent about it mm -hmm. as opposed to really wanting to tell a story perhaps right. like the little guys seem to want well, to do. I like about the confessional at Olivia's house as opposed to the program at Hearts Can Heal is that Hearts Can Heal is so scripted towards the death of a loved one, mm -hmm. you know, and, and working through what are those feelings and what are those things and what's the education mm -hmm. piece of death. Whereas the confessional is just a coping strategy in general. Right. So they can bring up stuff here about the death and mm -hmm. you know what's hard now as a result mm -hmm. of it. Or they can just bring up you know what's going on in their world and what they're unhappy well, about. Well, because when they're grieving, their personalities can somewhat be shifted. They can be moodier, they can be less tolerant, they don't mm -hmm. they're forgetful. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes their friends, their peers, even their family don't really get that this is what's going on in their head. And they may react to things that don't ordinarily upset them, but because they're really suffering a loss, they just don't have what it takes to sustain all of, you know, all of their personality of, I can tolerate my best friend today, or I just can't, so they vent. Yeah, I think for the teens, what's really cool, and I think universally in this program, or this project of the confessional, what's neat about it is the confidentiality end mm. of knowing that, I hate to use the word voyeur, but someone is watching Mm -hmm. And someone's going to see whatever it is I'm saying, mm -hmm. but they're not going to talk to me about it. Right. You know, at the end of the day, I'm, they're never going to ask me about what I said. Not going to tell you you shouldn't have thought that way yeah, or you shouldn't feel that They're way. not going to ask me more questions about it. Mm -hmm. It's just there. Yeah. So knowing that someone heard me, but it's mm -hmm. never going to comment. About and I wonder, too, if a kid might feel like all of these feelings they have trapped inside that, that feel so awful and they dump them. Is it okay? Am I all right now that I said that and felt that and did that? And if you're not going to react and you're not going to tell them they shouldn't feel that way, now I have permission. Okay, I do. It was okay to feel like that. Mm -hmm. And they can move on from it. Mm -hmm. So I think it's really um, an awesome tool in that sense. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about this phrase that we have, um, chaos among the calm or calm among the chaos. Well, that was kind of the theme for designing this space in the confessional. Um, we worked with program family and, and a, an alumni who had gone through the prototype of the confessional mm -hmm. and uh, she had utilized the camera and, and its use and said, what would it be to design the space? What would it look like if we could? And she used that idea, the designing element of that idea of calm is chaos. Mm -hmm. She said that's what her world felt like, you know, mm -hmm. and that um, there was a piece about, about her even though her world was spinning mm -hmm. or even in the verse reverse where her world was calm and seemed you know everything mm -hmm. was okay and her friends were all right and the family was all right but inside the head her world was spinning right so that idea of calm and this chaos and I think mm -hmm. it's just a perfect balance and the artist who created the beautiful artwork in here really got it he really really Absolutely. got the the chaos amidst the calm yeah. we worked with Ramon Trevino who you know was a, a gift to this mission and he puts he put his soul on, the, on these walls in graffiti art. That was kind of the goal. Mm -hmm. um, we knew that we wanted this room and this space mm -hmm. to be entirely different from everything else at Olivia's house. Everything else at Olivia's house is warm and cozy and comfortable and soft. And while this space still has that, we wanted it to be a little bit more raw. Right, if you will. right. And, and Ramon just brought that. The words are so peaceful, mm -hmm. but done in this graffiti style that gives an edge to it. Well, in a way, don't you see a kind of the symbolism of you can't really tell with the graffiti words what the words are unless you study them and kind of step back and, and give enough space to be able to say, oh, that word's peace, that word's hope. Um, and that's how it is with children who are grieving, too. You don't see right, right up front what they're feeling and what they're going through. But when you step back and you let them teach you and you just give yourself a little bit of space from them, it all comes forward and they give you everything that you need to know about them. First thing that I really was surprised by is how different the kids use the room. Some kids come in here as a way of connecting with other kids. Um, 
we had one group in particular, a group of teens that came in here, you might remember, and, and there was one girl in that group who was very quiet, she really didn't engage, she just listened, that was her personality, just take it all in. Um, she had lost a parent and she just really wasn't ready to put herself out there where the group was concerned, but she wanted to be a part of the group. So when the group decided that they were going to come up here and just kind of sit and tape and vet whatever and just do it as a group because it felt safer, she didn't want to not be part of the group. So she came along, but she sat off camera and she kind of took it all in. And I thought that that was very important that we recognize that not all children are comfortable on camera, but they definitely want to be a part of all of the tools that their peers use. Um, I think that the younger children surprised me the most. One little boy in particular really didn't know how to tell people about how his dad died. And he used this tool to let an adult know, I want to talk about my dad's death. And his death wasn't really socially acceptable. So I'm uncomfortable with how to talk about it and what to say. And my mom tells me I shouldn't say anything and not to tell anybody. Um, and that was a great opportunity for us to talk to mom and say, ordinarily, we wouldn't tell you anything that he shared in here, unless it was unsafe. And this isn't unsafe, but this is important. Well, and he asked us to. Yeah, that's, that's true. He did say, can you talk to my mom? That's I, right. I think some of the things that have, you know, they are teaching me, you know, was when we had the, the one child who brought in his guitar. Yes. And sang his song that he wrote for his dad. Life that I am living, it's not what you would but I will keep on trying Because I'm me, not you And you're gone that the two girls came in and interviewed each other. Yeah, reporters. Yeah, reporter reporters back to each other. Yeah. I, I'm always amazed when the kids want to invite me as the video companion in mm -hmm. to talk to them and just ask questions and just talk on camera. And then yet I love when, more or less the middle schoolers, they want to do the teleprompting and have me ask questions through yeah. the teleprompter even though the doors yeah. are closed. Yeah. And still invite, you know. You but you know the best part of it all, to me, the best part is that the parents trust us and they say, we don't need to hear what they say. We don't need to know what they say. Because you know, what parent doesn't want to know what's going on with their child, and especially their grieving child, who's dumping to some adults, one being a therapist, who wouldn't want to know what they said? And yet these parents are so willing and so wonderful, and they really want their children to heal, and they're a big part of that. That's how they got here, is the parents had the courage to walk through the door. So. The fact that the parents say, go ahead and keep everything, and I trust that you'll tell me if there's something I need to know, but ultimately I don't need to know anything, uh, that is huge. Yeah, that's really, really big. And I think that's big for the kids. Mm -hmm. I think that a child needs to know that they're trusted by their parent, and that their parent, even though they've lost their spouse or their child or their parent, that they're going to be okay enough that, they can, that they've trusted us and that they, they know that it's all good. You know, middle schoolers are all ego. Mm -hmm. And one would think a middle school kid doesn't really have their act together enough to have thoughts that make sense yet. Have you had real profound wisdom come out of middle school? I think, I think that's ridiculous on any of them, whether it's teen, middle school, or elementary school. Yeah, I The know. thoughts that come out of them are so profound. People would be amazed, wouldn't they? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. I, the middle schoolers give so much. Mm -hmm. So much. They're kind of the buffer. Because the little kids are like little puppies jumping up to get in here. The teens are like, I don't know. But the middle schoolers are like, well, okay, maybe. Yeah, I'll try it. And they're kind of like that in-between and that buffer. So the, the teens see it as not quite so childish, and the little kids see it as something grown up. Every week I'm in the confessional, I'm learning things that I've never knew. Children are the teachers, aren't they? They, they just bring oh some things entirely different, a yeah. new perspective that yeah. blows me away. And, when you figure how many obituaries are in the paper every day and you know and then how many of those families walk through our door it's a small percentage but what wisdom they give us to be able to go back out there and teach to people well you know our mantra always is in our program that the families are the experts yeah and then yeah. we're only on that path with them they miss you, they really, really